Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick Gaska and welcome back to I Could Do That DIY for another doll repaint video. Today we're taking on another procrastination doll and finishing up a Monster High Rochelle doll that I started a long time ago. Alright, let's get into it. Like I just mentioned, I started this doll a long time ago. As you can see, she's fully rerouted. At the end of my reroutes, I usually have a few scraps left. This reroute is a combination of all those scraps left over from many, many projects. She has a bunch of different colors in her hair. Just by looking at it, I can spot blue, purple, pink, orange, green, red, and a couple more colors. Alright, cool. Now let's prep her body for repaint. I'm going to wrap the hair and the body with some plastic wrap and then secure the edges with some scotch tape. I really love finishing up my procrastination projects. It's so nice to finish up old work. So after I have her all beautifully wrapped up just like this, I'm going to do two coats of Mrs. Super Clear as a base off screen. To start things off with the face up, like usual, I'm going to take my black watercolor pencil and mark out the general eye shape. I'm going to do it on both sides and then refine my shape with my eraser. After I get them balanced, I'm going to move on to the irises. For the irises today, I think I want to give her a heterochromia, meaning she has two different color irises. We're going to do one blue and then one green. Using my watercolor pencils, I'm going to mark out the shape and then fill it in. Using my white watercolor pencil, I'm going to color in the sclera. Using my black watercolor pencil, I'm going to mark out the upper and inner eyelids. Then I'm going to plot out my wing eyeliner shape. I'll draw a line that connects the center of the eye to the outside of the upper eyelid. Then connect it back down to the outer eye. After I make sure everything's symmetrical and I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to fill in both sides. Then let's highlight the face. Using my white pan pastel, I'm going to highlight the eyelid, the nose, the brow bone, the cheekbones, the forehead, and the chin. Then I thought I had a great idea and added some rainbow freckles. Using a few different colors of watercolor pencils, I'm going to draw in some freckles. This will make her existing freckles more colorful and fun. But at the end of the day, I'm not sure if it really had much of a payoff. It's a very subtle detail and you can't really see them at the end unless you're really looking, but oh well, I did anyway. Now using my light pink pastel, I'm going to blush the cheeks, a little bit on the forehead, and then the lip. Then I'll add opacity to the irises with my green and light blue pastels. On the next layer, we'll continue to build up color all over with my watercolor pencils. And while I do that, I just have to say thank you so much for watching. Also, remember, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all of our latest projects and doll repaints. I always love to see what you guys think about the doll, and I make sure to read all of your comments. And while you're at it, also follow us on Instagram, at ICouldDoThat.DIY, and at KawaiiDollies. To add depth to the iris, I'm going to use darker tones of the blue and the green to outline the edges of the iris and shade the top. Then I'll blend it out with a lighter tone. Let's redefine the eyeliner with my black watercolor pencil, where we fill in the top as well as darken up the bottom line. Now let's give her some eyeshadow with my purple pastel. I'm only going to shadow within the cut crease, then blend it out with a clean brush. After that, I'll continue to add color to the lip with my dark pink watercolor pencil. I'm also highlighting the edge with my white watercolor pencil, and then blending both with a Q-tip. 
Then I'll add even more color and depth to my magenta pastel. Then I'll add more light pink pastel and magenta pastel to blend it. Now I'm going to add some highlight and shimmer to the cheekbones and the eyes with some pink pearlic powder. On the next layer, I'll connect the bottom eye line with my dark pink watercolor pencil. Then I'll add the tear duct with my light pink watercolor pencil. Now let's add the pupil to my black watercolor pencil and pastel. I'll mark the position with my watercolor pencil and then darken up the pupil with my pastel. And I'll also shadow the top of the inside of the eye. Then I'll highlight and texture the lip with my white watercolor pencil and add more depth with the dark pink and blend it out with a Q-tip. Then using my white watercolor pencil, I'm highlighting the iris and the sclera. Now let's give her some eyebrows. Using my magenta pastel, I'm going to brush on the base and refine the shape with my eraser. After that, I'll use my magenta watercolor pencil to darken up the edges and the outside of the eyebrow. Alright, those look pretty good. Now let's highlight the brow bone with the white pastel. On the next layer, I'm going to add in the eyelashes. Using a very sharp black watercolor pencil, I'm going to start marking those in. I'm going to start the outside of the larger eyelashes and get smaller as I work my way in. After I do the eyelashes on both sides, I'm going to highlight the square and the iris with my white watercolor pencil. Then I'm going to darken up the pupils. Then I'll add more color to the irises with my pastels. On the next layer, we're going to create some texture in the eyebrows by adding some hairs with my watercolor pencil. I'm going to use a couple different colors. I'm going to use the magenta and the white. And of course, using my eraser to refine the shape as I go. Then I'll add some light pink pastel to the inside to blend it. On the final layer, we'll bring some life to the eyes by adding some catch lights. I'm going to add the catch lights using my white acrylic paint. With a large catch light today, I'm going to do a heart shape. I think this will look really cute. And an additional two little ones. I'll also use the acrylic paint to brighten up the square. So the face up is complete. Oh my god, yes, she looks so cute. I'm really happy with her. Now let's add some fake lashes. Using some fake lashes, I'm going to bend them to shape, measure them, and then cut them. After they're the right length, I'm going to use some Elmer's glue wall and glue them on. I'm using a pen to wipe away the excess glue and put them into place. After both sides are done and dried, it's time to gloss the eyes and the lips. Alright, let's grab our little tiny brush and start glossing. We're going to start with the eyes and then move on to the lips. It goes on a little hazy but dries nice and shiny and clear. While that's drying, let's work on the outfit. To keep on theme with the whole remnants thing, let's use an existing pattern and alter it. This is the pattern from my Barbara doll customization. 
Here is the front bodice. It's going to be pleated at the center. There will be two of them and they'll crisscross. Here is the skirt. We're going to cut it off into the yoke and add a ruffled bottom. And of course we're using some scrap fabric. This is the same rainbow stripe fabric that I used in my Lisa Lisa video. So here's everything cut out with the addition of the ruffled bottom. Cool. I'm going to start off by having the center opening as well as the sleeve. Then I'm going to sew together the yoke at the side seam. I'll also hem the bottom ruffle. After I sew together my seams at a quarter inch, I'm going to trim it down to an eighth of an inch and then finish off the edge with some fray check. I do this for all of my internal seams as it reduces bulk and obviously stops the edge from fraying. After both sides of the bodice are hemmed at the center front and sleeve, I'm going to tack down the front pleat. After I tack both sides, I'll sew the underseam on the sleeve. After I hem the skirt, I also ran a gathering stitch along the top. This is just two basing stitches very close to the edge. I knot one side, separate the threads, and then pull the bottom layer. I just keep pulling and gathering until I'm happy with the amount of ruffles. I just finagle with it a little bit and distribute the excess until I'm happy with the ruffles. After that, I'll sew the skirt and the bodice to the yoke off screen. So here it is so far, it's looking pretty good. Now off screen, I'm going to sew on a center back velcro closure. So here's a super professional hot tip. If you only kind of like something you make, add beading and sparkle to it till you like it. And that's what we're doing. We're adding multicolored beading to the shoulders and to the waist. This will make it super sparkly, colorful, and really 80s. I'm using a variety of beads which include sequins, paillettes, and seed beads. These are all scrap beads from previous projects. Yes, it's so sparkly now. Perfect, I like it so much better. Let's work on some accessories. I'm going to use some existing Monster High accessories. Here is a pink purse that is shaped like a pair of lips. It belonged to Draculaura. I'm just going to trim off these little dangly bits because I don't like them. Cool, it looks much better. Here are the other accessories I'm using. I'm using a necklace, a few bracelets, and a pair of existing Monster High shoes. So as you may know, this is not my first rainbow doll. In my previous video for Lisa Lisa, I received feedback from some of you that I should have given her rainbow nails. So I guess I'll give her some rainbow nails. With acrylic paint, of course. And of course, to keep along with the theme of leftovers and remnants, I'm going to create a stand using leftover parts. Monster High stands come in a variety of colors. I'm using parts from a teal, yellow, and a red stand. The mixed color will go perfectly with our overall aesthetic. Once I have that fully assembled, there's only one thing left to do. A doll photo shoot. So here she is, here's the final result. I'm really happy with how she turned out. Look how rainbow-tastic and amazing she is. I love it. So if you've been paying attention throughout the video, you might have guessed that the theme for this doll was remnants and scraps. The hair was scraps, the fabric was scraps, I altered an existing pattern, I used existing Monster High accessories that I've saved over the years because I throw nothing away, 
The different types of beads were all scrap material from different projects. With all that considered, I think she turned out amazing. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below, so let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and for the rest of the video, enjoy all the pretty colors and all the pretty photos. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!